Welcome to the Minimed 780G system. So we'll talk through how the algorithm works, a little bit on the evidence behind it, how at Birmingham, how we set up and educate with regards to the 780G, how to assess a download, and then it's gonna be over to you to look at some case studies to put what you've learned into action so then you'll be able to apply that knowledge when you see children and young people within your clinic. So here's the 780G system. You've got the pump itself, and obviously we'll have a cartridge, an insulin, and a cannula. You've got the Guardian sensor three or four, and then you've got the mobile app, which allows automatic upload to the internet, so we don't have to do downloading, and obviously um, that then can be linked to carers, et cetera, so that people um, can view from afar. So that's the 780G system. It um, runs by a proportional integral derivative method, which basically analyzes the deviation of measured glucose from a target glucose, where you want it to be, to calculate the amount of insulin to deliver. So the algorithm, importantly, does not use manually set basal rates. So changing the basal rates will not impact auto mode, and it actually will therefore keep up to date to the, per to the person's individual needs on an ongoing basis. When the glucose level is falling below target, it will reduce the insulin. When it's going above target, it will increase insulin. But importantly, with this system, it is very aggressive at managing highs. So it will deliver auto corrections if the max basal is reached, the max basal increases are reached, and the sensor glucose level is above 6.7, and it has an adjustable target glucose level. So it really looks at the current sensor glucose, how far it is away from the target that you've set, and how long the sensor glucose has been away from that target and how rapidly it has been changing and to estimate a total of insulin. So it doesn't really look so much at kind of the previous insulin on board and carbs or anything like that. It really just focuses on a very glucose centric um, way. Therefore, it can be a lot more aggressive in tackling highs compared to the other systems. The algorithm uses the total daily dose to, cur to calculate the sensitivity and it's updated every night. And it really looks at the sort of the max and minimum auto basal is um, derived from the last six to 12 days worth of insulin. So the last six to 12 days worth of insulin will determine the basically how high or how low the insulin can be adjusted by. Here's just a simple graphic to kind of show it in action. So you can see the sensor glucose here. It has a target level of 5.5. 8.3 is clearly above that. Therefore, you can see here that the max basal is reached. Therefore, an autocorrection is pumped in. It remains high. The glucose level starts to drop, predicted to go below, and you can see the auto basal drops down and virtually stops. And then it goes high again. You can see auto corrections going in because it's predicted to be above 6.7 and the max basal is reached. And again, you can see it's always upping and downing. So it can be very aggressive post meal um, with the corrections compared to the other systems, especially if you have the active insulin time set low at two or two and a half hours and a target level at 5.5. It will be very, very fast or very, very aggressive on high highs after meals, which is good in most situations, but can produce some challenges for children and young people who are especially active. So you have a selection of areas to set the target glucose level at 5.5, 6.1 and 6.7. So it's great, it can go as low as 5.5. One of the challenges of this system is you don't have time segments. So you can't set 5.5 overnight and then 6.7 during the day. You only get one time block, which again, potentially has can be problematic to some people who during the day when they're very sensitive to insulin, you might have to set that target level a little bit higher than you would ideally like. <clears throat> However, there are pros and cons. It can be extremely aggressive for getting tight control, but obviously on the flip side, um, for people with very erratic or varying insulin needs across the day, sometimes not having the variability to be able to adjust that target level can be problematic. As long as a healthcare professional, you know what you're dealing with, you can make the necessary adjustments and tackle most problems. Here it is in pictures to give you an idea. So across here we have the sensor glucose level, we have the target of where it is aiming for in the green, and then a target level between sort of four and 10. So as the sensor glucose level goes across the day and you can see, and here is where actual finger pricks or entries of the glucose are put into the system. Obviously you've got time across the day and several different days here. And then where here we have is how the basal insulin and then the auto correction. So in the pink is the um, basal that's going up and down across the day. In the blue is the auto corrections where they've gone in. 
And what you can see here is after a bolus where it's been given for a meal, so 48 grams of carbs, 3.5 units of insulin, the bolus has gone in. You can see a shaded area going across here, and this is the active insulin time and um, where the pump thinks the, the insulin from the meal bolus is lasting. So obviously the longer you have that active insulin time, you take away the effect of how aggressive the algorithm can be. The shorter you make that active insulin time, the more aggressive the algorithm can be. So the active insulin time is something you can really play around with to really tackle post-meal high for example. Obviously here you have the insulin that is delivered and below that is the carbohydrate entries and if it has a bracket 2 it puts the largest carbohydrate entry here and there'll be one that's smaller within there just in case you're wondering what the brackets are. You can see here if it's got manual suspense, for example, you can see here where that's happened. They've probably had a shower, for example, got out, put in a shower for half an hour, making sure that they, they know the algorithm doesn't continue to work while they're in the shower. Um, and I think that's pretty much most of the things. Across the bottom, you can see all the uh, legend to show you what's happening as time goes on. Um, and again, if you had a temporary target put on where it pushes the glucose level to 8.3, you'll see a little dotted line like across here. So obviously when we come to think about insulin changes and how things are going, these day to days are useful to kind of get a feeling of how the algorithm is performing and also importantly what the user is doing. Is the user putting in several meals a day, which this person is? If there are no oranges there, then this person is not putting carbohydrate entries in. So this gives you both the insulin information, but also the user behavior information to help you determine how to support who you're looking after, optimize their timing range um, and get improved diabetes control. Some of the specifics, obviously you can use the Guardian Center 3 or 4, the vast majority of people now are using the Guardian Center 4, which doesn't require calibrations, which is handy. It's currently licensed from 7 to 80 years old, and obviously that will change as time goes on and the evidence comes in. A total daily dose as low as 80, with as high as 250 a day, and the weight range from 10 to 300, and obviously all the rapid active insulins. As we discussed before, it uses a total daily dose from the last sort of two to six days <coughs> to adjust algorithms, um, the algorithm parameters, basal insulin adjustments every five minutes, and then importantly from this perspective is in its if the max auto basal is reached and it's going to be going above 6.7, it's going to be putting in auto corrections to get on top of those post meal highs. From a bolus perspective, no extended boluses and obviously making sure your carb ratios are consummate with, with what the person needs is important. The target level, obviously the tighter you have that at 5.5, the more time and range you're going to have, but you have to marry that off with the individual in front of you if they've got varying insulin sensitivities across the day. Because you don't have time blocks here, you might have to compromise at 6.1. However, if they seem to have a very, a very similar uh, insulin sensitivity across the day, 5.5 is fat grand. The adjustable parameters carb ratio we've discussed, active insulin time is the big one. We've already said if you shorten the active insulin time, you're going to make the algorithm a lot more aggressive. So you're going to get more time in range. But obviously as you shorten the active insulin time, the risk is there'll be more insulin on board and especially for sporadic activity people, that might mean more hypoglycemia. So you're always gonna be treading a balance between um, time in range and preventing excessive hypoglycemia. The overrides, you can put the temp target on, which pushes the target glucose level to 8.3 and importantly stops the auto corrections. Especially useful for exercise because what you don't want is the glucose level going high because someone's just eaten five dextrose tablets, loads of auto corrections, then hypo city. So get this temp target on 90 minutes before, ideally, if not just before, which pushes the target glucose level up and importantly stops auto corrections. Just similar to the rest of the systems, if you lose CGM data, it will flip back into manual mode. And if the max base limit has been reached and stays there for a number of hours, it will flip out of auto mode and require user action because it's likely that the insulin is not going through. The download format is different to the other systems. It's Kerlink, so it's bespoke. So again, when we go through the downloads, it's just a different way of approaching the information. It's the same information, but it's just understanding how it's presented to you, and most importantly, how you can understand it, and then support the people making therapy decisions. Here's just information from the latest information from the Pivotal Trials, just like every other system, where these systems absolutely rock and roll is overnight. You've got no exercise, you've got no food, nothing but basal insulin and glucose coming out of the liver, and essentially you get timing range lovely overnight and you wake up. During the day when you've got sporadic activity, carbohydrates going in, yes, you get improved control compared to just standard pumps and sensors with no automated insulin delivery, but the difference isn't as stark as overnight. That is because at the moment the insulin 
intestines aren't fast enough to cope with the daily shifts from carbs and exercise. But again, a huge difference in terms of glycemic profile across the 24 hours. And obviously this is why we love automated insulin delivery systems. System specifics is important here. So the running of the study here is the first bar, the overall study results, and then if you want to get tight control, you set the tight, the target at 5.5 and the, auto, the active insulin time at two hours, you get more of the percentages of people with a, um, a glu ah, glucose management index of less than 7%, so over 70% more than 7% time in range, 84% um, less than you know, less than hypos, so it doesn't come at the expense of hypos, and a lot of people with lower uh, time above range, and ultimately meeting all those goals a lot higher. So in theory, getting the target set at 5.5 and the active insulin time at 2 is where you want to aim for. But bear in mind, for young children especially, although it's not licensed for the under 7s yet, and people with very sporadic activity, the tighter you set those target limits, the more insulin on board there will be. Therefore, you have to be careful with lots of sporadic activity. So again, if you want to blanketly start, everyone on 5.5 in two hours maybe that makes sense to get tight in time range but obviously if you see people experiencing a lot of hypoglycemia because of erratic lifestyles then don't be afraid, afraid to dial that tack that active insulin time back to two and a half and three hours and push that target level up individualize it to the person in front of you but obviously the tighter the settings the more time in range but don't put that at the expense of too much hypoglycemia this is how we start our children and people. We just do one flat basal rate for in the background, just in case it flips back into manual mode, then it's easy to update. We start with an active insulin time at three hours just to be on the safe side. And then we get that down quickly once we see the algorithms performing effectively. Similarly, start with a glucose level at 6.1 and pull it down quickly. And um, that's just because we don't want to start someone off having hypos all the time, but we're very cognizant. We want to get this target down to 5.5 and this active insulin down to two and a half or two as soon as possible because we know the evidence base suggests that that's going to be the most time in range. Again, with our program, we get them to select online, we get them to come in and set up, and then because if they generally have a telephone where they get automatic uploads via the care link, we can see that virtually, we don't necessarily need to bring them in. And again, we'll individualize that for people needing one-to-ones. We've got a stepwise approach for our healthcare professionals to educate. And again, you'll have access to this if you want to have a look at how uh, we do it, and you're more than welcome to use and adapt to our materials. And then really what the patients get or the children and people get is the key things. Again, suspend the pump when taking it off and resume after the shower. Extremely important to make sure the algorithm doesn't continue to work delivering insulin to the towel or the floor while someone's in the shower or in the bath or swimming. You're still going to need to prevent and treat hypos just with less of the amounts than you're used to doing. And again, this idea of if you're above 14 for sort of 90 minutes to two hours and there's no good explanation for it, knowing how aggressive this algorithm can be, there's probably something wrong with the insulin going and you need to change the cannula. Obviously, if the ketones are not 0.6 and above, pen injection and stop the smart card for four hours. Infusion management stays the same. And again, you may need to calibrate the G4 if those readings are more than 20% different than the finger prick blood glucose, as long as the finger prick blood glucose has been done twice and it's a patent sample from a decent blood glucose meter. Specifics, all this stuff remains the same in terms of the food and insulin. And again, don't, as Francesca would say, um, Observe it first and don't fiddle until you find out. So essentially you want to make sure you, this algorithm was likely to get on top of those delayed highs from pizzas because it's very aggressive with post meal highs and you might not need to do anything extra. If you do need to do anything extra, it might be that you have to dial in some fake carbs about an hour after eating. And if it's too aggressive, you can just reduce the carbs that you put in um, the next time by 25% and allow the algorithm to kind of take over the extra uh, insulin requirement later on but that requires a bit of trial and error and to see and again exercise we'll recap over in a proper exercise video towards the end but again something simple for the people who you're supporting to go away with they don't want a 60 page document they want a two side of a4 with some qr codes of how to do things and again you can just qr code your sensor change so again you're not going to remember all this information on the first education session but if they have the bespoke perfect videos at the right time it will just mean that they will feel more comfortable and confident in managing their automated instant delivery system on our download tool, you can see it tells you what will adjust 
um, the algorithm. So again, two hours aggressive, 2.5 hours normal, three hours safe. So that's what we think about. Again, 5.5 normal, safe hypo issues. And again, these suggested carb ratios are based on the idiot's guide of the average person with insulin sensitivity. That average person will very unlikely turn up in your clinic. Therefore, it's important that you apply your clinical judgment when using these things so you don't end up um, saying, computer says this, therefore I will put this in. Have a look at the readings, determine what you think is right and use that. This is just a guide. Important to update the back basal rates in the background, the sensitivities in the background, and the max basal rates, etc., and then follow the assessment process. On the download assessment tool, you can click on the 780G and it will talk you through how to create a download, how to review a download using this, um, and that is also on the next video down on this um, study day. So I encourage you to go and watch that video now, and then once you watch that video, you'll see below that you can then take case studies and use the clinic tool and the Survive and Thrive guides and work through them and present to your colleague What's the time below range? What's the time in range? What time of the day are you going to focus on in terms of their glucose control? Are they following the survive and thrive and the ideal behaviours? And then think about what potential setting changes you want to discuss with the person and then also what manual settings updates. Once you've done a couple of those, you'll feel confident when you see people in clinic to walk through um, adjusting the algorithm, but also really thinking from a behavioral perspective, what kind of small behavioral changes will lead to improved diabetes control and less diabetes burden. So I hope that's been useful. Time for you to look through how to look at a download and then work your way through the case studies.